your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. I heard it. I suppose I'm to answer it. Tucker here. Howdy, ma'am. Howdy. Well, ma'am, she's here. Who's here? Good gracious. You almost scared the life out of me. Oh, it wasn't me. I said nary a word. That was a cow. Of course, it was the cow. I know it was the cow. But when you answer your doorbell, you don't expect to find a cow on your threshold and be bellowed out of countenance. Oh, there's just somebody at the door. What was that? What'd you say? It sounded like the bellowing bull of Bashan. It isn't a bull, is it? No, no, ma'am. <laughs> she ain't a bull, and I can prove it. It's a, it's a lady calling, David. Maybe you better come on down here and see her. No, no, no. She can't come in here. Yeah, hold her, ma'am. You hold her. Uh, this is Mr. Warren, hey, ma'am. Hold it. Mr. Super, see, now back up. Mind your manners. Now back up. Back up, she's a right friendly cow, ma'am, right friendly. She'll just make herself just one of the family. Not in the front parlor, I hope. Hello, Bobo, what's going on? Well, 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 look who we have here. Howdy, Sean. Howdy, Mr. Norton. Your man Fritz dropped by Matthews on his way to town this morning. Said as how your barn was finished just today, and there was no reason why we shouldn't bring Majesty here over to you. No. There's a lady here selling dairy products. Oh, tell her we don't want any. Tell her we made other arrangements. Well, Majesty Cow, she's talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> you be the dairy arrangements the Norton's have made. Hey, David. <laughs> yeah. Ask her if she has any butter. We're fresh out of butter. We can use a couple of... Yeah, you better tell Mrs. Norton until Majesty freshens up in a week or so. She's also fresh out of the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Tell her nature provides, but uh, in her own good time. Oh, David. Oh, you, Mr. Tucker, I thought David was pulling my leg. You said there was a leg. Oh. Oh, you darling, you lovely darling, you. Watch out, or she'll try and come in the parlor. Uh, this... Oh. Back up, back up, your she varmint. God dang you, get off my toes. Mama, I'd like you to meet... I know, the new cow. Uh, you ain't been formally introduced, ma'am. This is... Long Meadow, Majesty Smoky Smilax. How do you do? Or should one curtsy before Majesty? Wouldn't be no less than her do. She's a champion, she is. Yep, Danbury Fair. Uh, Jared, I brung along her ribbons and medals. David, I thought you and Claudia were just buying a cow. I didn't realize you were acquiring a personage. All evidence that she be a personage, she be by stores, restless, gambars, out of Great Radiant Cow, one of the greatest cows of the breed. Professor Johnson at uh, Bob Johnson up to the college says... Uh, Bob, he says this here cow is as fine a cow as he's ever seen. Well, Mr. Tucker, you talk as proud and possessive about this cow as if she'd have been yours, not Mr. Warren's. Well, why wouldn't I toot her hard? This here majesty cow is a pride and adornment to Fairfield County and to the state of Connecticut. She's the kind of cow makes a man proud to be a farmer. Anyhow, Matthew's too modest a man to talk her up. Uh, tell him about her record as a two-year-old, Jerry. I'll tell him. Could write a book about this cow. Don't know if it might be a lot better than some of the trash and drivel and mushy love stories at Kid Rich. Well, how about taking her back to the barn and installing her in a new quarter? Ah, good idea, good idea. That's why I wanted to bring her over here myself, personal, to sort of ease her into her new surroundings. That's a good idea. Of course, if she's lonely, we could always invite her into the parlor. She almost barged in this morning anyway. Don't you do it, ma'am. Give an animal a foot and she'll take an L. You let her come in once and you'll spoil her. She'll always want to be in. We'll remember that, Mr. Tucker. Had a calf one winter and nursed in the kitchen. Growed up, we had the dangest time keeping her out. Got herself a taste for apple pie. <laughs> 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 Till I, my sister struck, she did. 
There was no more apple pies until I broke the cow her habit. Yes, yeah, you have to be firm with her. I didn't realize there was so much to keeping a cow. Look, Claudia and David, I'll go back to the house and stay with Bobby until Fritz and Bertha get back from the beach. A nice barn you got yourself fixed up, Mr. Norton. Yeah, sure is a nice barn. Oh, there ain't no finer in town. I, I, I overseen her fixing. Yeah, I hear tell you got yourself some mail-order stanchions and fancy drinking bowls. And them uh, patent automatic salt blocks. Cow gets hankering for salt, all she's got to do is want, and there's the salt block right to hand to wrap her tongue around. Here, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll open the door for you. Boy. Well, I be. Yes, sir. I be. You'll be what, Mr. Warren? I be dumbfounded when I get around to catch my breath. No, sir. There ain't no car wouldn't be happy in a home like this. Well, it's sort of scientific, but it it isn't fancy. You know the uh, the state college ain't ain't no one wit, no uh, one wit uh, better. Look, Jerry, it's a nice cabin pen and four stanchions and a room for a lot more. Oh, we're only going to keep one car, Mr. Warren. <laughs> That's what you think. Mr. Norton's a far-sighted man. I uh, knew a couple of young marrieds got themselves a three-room house because they was going to have their shelves only one baby. And? And <laughs> they had themselves 11. A whole herd of young ones. <laughs> no, far-sighted man builds to accommodate the future. Hmm, I suppose if Majesty had a calf... A heifer. A what? A heifer. That's a female woman calf. Oh. Well, if Majesty has a heaver... Heifer. Why, that's what I said. If Majesty has a heifer, a calf, we'd probably keep her, but we'd never keep more than two cows. And not forgetting that the two will have cows. And not forgetting my little allegory of the family with 11 children. <laughs> well, well, 11 is a good round number. I'll lay you a wager the day comes young David Norton looks at himself and says, Here I am, a man with a double life. A what? A double life. I got me a profession of architecture. Got me a herd of cows. A house divided leaks on happiness. Come on, boss. You get through that door. And? And uh, somebody else will be building the building, son. You'll be a farmer. Come on, cow. A push from your end, Matthew. She, she doesn't seem to want to go in. Yeah, critters be critters of habit, we be, yes. It's, it's a strange place, and she's choosy. The place isn't nice enough for her? Uh, it's nice enough, ma'am, just different. Oh. And got to think things through, these cows do, and cows think slow. You, um, you don't suppose she expects to be carried over the threshold like a new bride? Uh, cows it? can be the most ornery, cantankerous critters when never mind to be. Uh -huh. Patience does it. Trouble is, a man ain't got as much time to be patient with as a cow. My, my pa, my pa would have give her a, a twist and she'd be through that door like a shot. Give her a what? You grab the cow's tail, aim the critter, and then you twist it. And you're where you ought to be. But it must hurt. Oh, no, don't hurt at all. Just the cow don't like it, so she goes somewhere else where she's aimed. Well, well it usually. sounds very cruel. No, no, it ain't cruel, it ain't cruel at all. I'm the last man as would be cruel to a critter. Uh, you just hold him so and uh, stand aside, Matthew. You just give him a little. Garrett, <laughs> did you twist Majesty's tail? Did did I what? Now, Matthew. Twist I... the tail. She stampeded it all over me and tromped my foot. Well, uh, suppose we say she got a sudden idea. Yeah, look at that. She's standing in her stall as contented as if she'd always been there. Uh, close her stanchion, son, before she changes her mind and gets out. Yeah, well, we let her settle down, Mr. Norton, for an hour or two. <laughs> we'll all go away and leave her and let her get used to things. I think you'd hate giving her up, Mr. Warren. Oh, one cow, another cow, they just critters. Don't pay to squander any emotions on them. Just something to buy and sell. Only a fool gets sentimental about an animal. Come on, let's get off and leave her. <clears throat> you got a leading halter, Jared? No, you left it over the stanchion. No, here, I'll get it, Mr. No, no, don't bother, son. You, you won't go ahead. I, I'll just step back and get it. All right, we'll wait for you, Matthew. I suppose when you raise a lot of animals, you can't afford to get attached to them. 
จอหน่อยเคยป่าเจอแล้วอีสิอาสานเจอนายสองเจอแม่นายสาวเจอไอ้ยุคที่เขามาลาดบาสกุดวะ It's hard to cut a big block of New England granite without getting a soft spot in it. That's very true. Through an understanding observation, son, the old man's just standing there patting the cow. Uh, now he's nuzzling his head against her head. Let's walk ahead. There's some things you you don't eavesdrop on. Hey, girl, and hey, you won't be far away. This next farm, next pasture, and I'll be seeing you. Of course, just with ordinary animals, man's a fool to get his feelings tangled up with them. But cows is different, though, and, and pigs, pigs, pigs is different. Well, <coughs> 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 goodbye, Miss Norton. Miss Norton. <coughs> Got to be getting back to my farm. <coughs> Got work to do. <coughs> Funny thing, the hay must be dusty. Sort of choked my throat up and got mice. I feel a little choked up too, Mr. Warren. I'll uh, walk along with you, Matthew, and keep you company. Oh, thank you, Jerry. I'll try to take good care of Majesty, Mr. Warren. Maybe we'll raise some Jersey cows that'll make you glad and proud that you let us have Majesty uh, as our first. She'll be in good hands, son, or I wouldn't have sold it to you. Well, goodbye. You'll be seeing me. Goodbye, you two, Norton. Goodbye. He couldn't have been more upset if he'd sent a child of his out into the world. It was a pretty soft spot in old Jared Tucker too, mm. walking home with Warren to keep him company. <laughs> if you want gentleness in a man, pick a strong and a tough one. She's lonely. Um, look, maybe, uh, maybe we better go back and see her. What are you smiling at? Nothing. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just looking at a strong man and a very sweet one. Come on, let's go back and hold Majesty's hand. Shopping can be a bore or an interesting adventure. It depends largely on how you feel. One good way to keep yourself in the adventure frame of mind is to stop at the Coca-Cola cooler between times. You'll find Coke around the corner from anywhere. Ready to help you shop refreshed. Uh, howdy, Sean. Well, I see you and Mr. Warren got the Norton's new cow installed in the barn. Yep. Give Matthew quite a twinge to say goodbye to that cow. Come the parting moment, he hated to see her leave his farm. It was a right nice thing of you to walk along with him. Oh, shucks, twas nothing. Men got feelings too, son. Say, uh, did you hear tell if the Norton's are driving into city tomorrow? Well, I understand they are. I've a mind to hitch a ride with. You got business in the big city, Jared? That I got. That I got. Sounds important. Oh, stop nosing. It is important, son. It's personal, and I aim to keep it personal. I like you, son, but I think you're a blabbermouth. I have a feeling what I tell you gets blabbed all over the country. What I got to do in the city, I wouldn't tell no living soul wouldn't. No. Nope. Sounds mysterious. Well, good luck to whatever it is. And I'll be in town tomorrow myself, so I may be seeing you. Yeah, be a pleasure, son. Be a pleasure. So long now. So long, Jared. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Jared Tucker and Matthew Warren are played by Cameron Andrews and Stuart McIntosh. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>